Jeff, the talking mongoose, didn't just stay in his home up in the hills. In fact, some of the most interesting stories about the Dorby spook are from here, in Peel. And he said that he came here hanging on to the undersides of the buses as they travelled the three or so miles from Glen May. And back then, in the 1930s, the bus depot was in this building here. And a good example of the sort of jeal that Jeff got up to here was stealing the sandwiches of one of the conductors, Jack Tear. Jeff used his claw to slice open the brown paper packaging and steal the six sandwiches inside, much to Tear's annoyance. I'd like to get my hands on that, Jeff, he said. But one of Jeff's favorite people to spy on was one of the mechanics at the depot, a fellow named John Cowley. He lived very close in the flat over Cowley's pharmacy. And one of Jeff's favorite things was to spy on him and then report back all of his findings to James Irving, the father back at Dawlish Cashin. We used to dread the coming of Mr. Irving. He could tell us in an uncanny way what we had been doing and talking about. Things inside the staff room at the depot, or more impressively, the furnishings inside Cowley's flat, or the colour of the tea service which he only got out on Sundays. These sorts of things left Cowley and the other fellows in the depot in no doubt that Jeff was real. And so they were setting traps for him. A baited wire cage underneath the waiting room and an electric trap underneath the 81 bus which ran the Peel to Dolby route. But of course, when Irving found out about this and went to warn Jeff, the Dolby spook told him that he knew already. That animal, or whatever it is, said Cowley, knows a darn sight too much. <laughs>